Hi! In this video, we will talk about Channel Maker in a Playout Center. Channel Maker is designed from the ground up to have redundancy and resiliency as building blocks. It has internal mechanisms to support 1 plus 1 and M plus M configurations that allow you to be confident in playing out your 24-7, 365 content, knowing that Channel Maker is keeping things under control. In the simplest and most reliable configuration, Channel Maker works with a main and backup playout. Both playouts output your channel simultaneously, and you can have an automatic changeover to reliably choose the system that resists any possible failure. These systems are at the same time completely autonomous and conversely totally synced to each other. Main and backup roles are dynamic and are achieved through an automated process that guarantees your channel runs smoothly in the event of a hardware or software failure. Manual demotion of a server from main to backup is also possible for scheduled maintenance of a system. In N plus M configurations, the M backup playouts are not hot in a sense that there is no simultaneous playout of one channel, but they're warm since they are monitoring and messaging between all systems. They're waiting for the opportunity to pick up for any one of the N main channels on failure of any of the subcomponents of the system. Channel Maker Playout can control a variety of media servers and will automate them in a transparent and similar fashion than the turnkey configuration. If you plan to use another brand of video server, Channel Maker has a plugin system that will swap in the appropriate control plugin for your brand of server, keeping everything else in place. The same is true for graphic engines. If you have a preferred vendor for your broadcast graphics, Channel Maker will use the plugin for that system and still provide a consistent user experience regardless of your choice. The wiring of a multi vendor system will obviously be dependent on your choices, but many options are valid, giving you great flexibility in deciding how to design your playout center. You can produce fill plus key graphics, for example, and use a mixer downstream to merge graphics with video, as opposed to an in a box approach of live in to video and graphics out, where everything is composed inside one system. Having upstream and downstream switchers and routers is also something you can control automatically by decorating your rundown with secondary events or rules that will allow you to switch live sources or downstream keyers. If you're running a multi-channel outfit, you will probably want to control your assets through WT Vision's Media Asset Manager. One of its key advantages is when you schedule an asset from the MAM, the system can automatically make sure that it will find its way to the right locations without any user intervention. Channel Maker may also be put in a network playout mode, where a fast central storage location will feed all playouts and play content through the network. In addition, this configuration may be kept as a backup to a more conventional local storage solution. Let's say I want to schedule a content that is not currently in the playout location. Channel Maker lists all media available in all reachable MAM locations so you have access to the entirety of your content. Dragging a media thumbnail into the rundown, the system immediately runs a media check. As soon as it returns an error saying the media is missing from the playout location or locations, Channel Maker makes a media transfer request to the MAM. If the media exists anywhere on the mapped network, a pending state is sent and MAM issues a transfer request between a node that has the content and the final destination. As soon as this starts, Channel Maker produces a progress indicator so the operator knows when the media will be available. When complete, the system changes the error state of the rundown to green, and all is well. For live programs, Channel Maker can issue a live rep command to adjacent media tools, which is WT Vision's ingest and trimming software. Stay tuned for a video on that. By adding file name metadata to the live show, the system will prepare and record a clip with each part of your live broadcast, which you may reinsert as a future media placeholder into your rundown. WT Vision MAM will pick up on this file as soon as it appears on the network, and it will show in the MAM searches immediately shown as a growing file. By matching the placeholder file name with this now available content, the MAM will automatically associate the two media, and the transfers for the reruns of this show will happen with no user intervention. With certain restrictions based on media location, it is also possible to play while ingesting content. Let's say you have a sports channel and have started recording a football match while a game is still being aired. 
When that finishes, you would like to start playing out the live match immediately, but from the beginning. Channel Maker supports open-ended media files recorded using media tools by using a placeholder estimated duration so your rundown stays close to reality. This media may be then closed when the game part is done and Channel Maker will take the next item when the whole file is played. You can also manually move to the next item in the rundown by pushing Take Next. If you are planning to virtualize your playouts, Channel Maker has been certified to work with baseband IP and compressed standards either by using Media Server Streaming Edition or by way of third-party OEM solutions. No video cards are used for this configuration. Integrations with traffic systems are possible due to the extremely powerful and flexible nature of Channel Maker's underlying SlideCG platform. In it, you can design project-specific Python scripts that adapt to your specific needs. If you don't require this, standard file formats are available for import. Stay tuned for more tutorials about WT Vision software. Thanks for watching.